to rejoice, amen, to be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. And we're trusting in the Lord with all thy heart. And we're leaning out into thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And we just truly thank God for those who tuning in to the Real Time Gospel Hour. Amen. I always say we're living and last, if we're living in perilous times, dangerous times, amen, praise God, amen. Uh, so we need Jesus, amen, we need Jesus. It's never before, amen, we need uh, Jesus. So I just thank God for the opportunity to be able to proclaim the word of God, amen, the infallible word of God, amen, preach and teach the word of God, amen. Don't know how long we're going to be here. Praise God. But while we here, we're going to give God the glory and the praise. Amen. Praise God. All of our help come from the Lord, which made the heavens and earth. Praise God. I find it to be encouraging. Amen. Oftentimes when I have to go to the store or somewhere, I meet people and they tell me they watch and see. Amen. What's going on. And amen. I just want to promote Jesus Christ, the word of God. Amen. Praise God. That's the word of God that saved me. I like to sing, but I love the word of God. It's the word of God that'll save you and keep you. Keep you saved if you want to be kept. Amen. Amen. When you sing a song, what is this? It got me feeling so good. Right now, what is this? You know, it make it somebody makes me love my no, the Holy Ghost don't make you do nothing. I say the Holy Ghost helped me. Amen. To, to, to love my enemies. My enemy, the, the Holy Ghost helped me uh, love my friends. Hmm? Amen. The Holy Ghost don't make you do nothing. Amen. The, the Holy Ghost is a helper to help us to live right. Amen. Praise God. So we just thank God once again for this opportunity uh, to, to be before you tonight. Amen. I always get uh, questions on how to deal with certain things in the Word, and I always say the Bible, amen, praise God, our, our uh, Bible is the road map, amen, our road atlas to heaven, if we want to go to heaven, amen, if you want to know certain things, get in God's Word, amen, for every 
man's questions, God has an answer. Amen. In his word. That's why he tells us to study, to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Praise God. Some folks ain't rightly dividing the word of truth because they try to interpret the word of God in a chronalistic mind. Amen. You got to be spiritual minded. You got to have the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost to give you a discerning of the spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I tell you, praise God over the weekend. Praise God. People attention. Amen. Watch their favorite team. Amen. And uh, this type of stuff. But boy, if folks would love the Lord like they love their, <laughs> their favorite team. Amen. That they will support uh, the church like they support their favorite team. I ain't got nobody. Amen. If they support, amen, the, the ministry of God, if they support Jesus Christ, what kind of church would we have? Amen. Praise God. So many folks on today is distraught because their team didn't win. Amen. But I'm on a winning team. Amen. 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 The team called Jesus Christ. Amen. And they, the, the, the name of the team is called Christians. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't saying to be a part of the body of Christ. But one thing about the body of Christ, you can't join in. You have to be born in. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. People snot and crying and having, they couldn't sleep last night and all this old type of foolishness. Amen. But get Jesus on your mind. Amen. Get Jesus on your mind. We living in a day in society, you all, that folks ain't studying about getting married. Amen. People are talking about even, I'm talking about even in the church, you hear folks talking about, that's my boo and that's my sugar, that, that's my baby, that's my, that's my man, that's my woman and and you always hear people say that's my soul mate or uh, uh, we we soul ties <laughs> and so what does the bible say amen about soul ties or either amen my soul mate amen preview about my soul mate you hear people say that praise the name of lord amen the the phrase soul ties amen is not in the bible Mm -hmm. Rather, the ideal of soul tied or soul mate is a man-made speculation uh, which some teachers uh, superimpose up unto scripture, amen, in an attempt to explain certain human behavior. Mm -hmm. Amen. Soul ties are either uh, soul mate. Mm -hmm. are said to be connection from one person's soul to or into another person's soul, a concept that has no basis in Scripture. Huh? Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. No basis in Scripture. And so we're going to go into the word of the Lord. Amen. I need you to have your Bibles open. Amen. If you have a Bible app on your phone, go to that where how, however you read the Word of God. But I'm coming out of the King James uh, Virgin. Amen. It said the Bible does speak of close relationship, mm -hmm, such as that of David and Jonathan. And so when we look at 1 Samuel, I think it's 18 and 1. Uh, 1 Samuel 18 and 1, it said, And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul. Amen. Saul was the father of Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, King Saul was the first king of Israel. Amen. Praise God. He was the first king of Israel. Amen. And like I said, he was the father of Jonathan. Amen. Had an end of speaking unto Saul that that the soul of Jonathan was knit with, with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Huh? That's what it said in the Bible. He loved him as his own soul. 
Uh huh. Also, when you look at Second Samuel, I mean First Samuel, excuse me, First Samuel twenty three and eighteen, is it? And they two made a covenant, a covenant before the Lord. And David abode in the woods, wood, and Jonathan went to his house. And so when we begin to look at these scriptures, I'm reading some scriptures to try to come to my point. Amen. I think second, what I was going to second Samuel uh, 1 and 26, it, uh, it talks about David. And I think this was after David got word that Saul and, and Jonathan, uh, they, they was killed in the battle. And he said, I am distressed for thee, my brother, my, my brother, Jonathan. He didn't say my lover. Jonathan. Hello, somebody. He said, my lover, Jonathan. He said, my brother, Jonathan, uh, very pleasant uh, has thou uh, been unto me. He was kind unto him. Amen. He loved him. They was close friends. They was uh, homosexuals. I get into that. They wasn't no homosexual lovers. Amen. Thy love to me was wonderful. Uh -huh. Passing the love of women, huh? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So this is simply a way of expressing Jonathan's total mm -hmm, commitment to and deep friendship, his deep friendship with David, huh? Amen. We talking about what does the Bible say about soul mates or soul tides? My people, that's my soulmate. That's my soulmate. So many times, amen, folks in the world, or sometimes even in the church, amen, people think you ought to condone homosexuality, but homosexuality is a sin. I'm going to read the scripture here. I didn't make it up. Henderson didn't come up with this thing. Amen. It's in the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God created male and female. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what he did. Let me get on to this. Amen. Because somebody probably getting all upset with me, but that's all right. I'm going to preach the word anyhow. Teach the word of God. But uh, some folks try to say, well, Jonathan and David, no, they, 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 they wasn't booty buddies. Amen. They wasn't sugary. Amen. They wasn't sisters. They was not homosexual. But amen. Praise God. But they were friends. Mm -hmm. I remember that was a scene. Uh, I, I, I probably tell how little bit old I am. But I used to look at, still look at uh, Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son. And one time, uh, 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 Lamont and his 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 buddy uh, uh, Rollo, <laughs> uh, Rollo and, and Lamont was seeking going different places and and they went into a gay bar and, and, and Bubba was the friend of Fred, uh -huh, which was Lamont's father, and so. Bubba seen those two go in there, and he was just so surprised that they were going into the gay blade. They went into a gay bar. And so Bubba couldn't wait to go home and tell Fred that he seen his son go into a gay bar. Mm-hmm. Amen. And so Fred, like, no, it ain't nothing wrong with Lamont, whatever. It ain't nothing wrong with him. But I asked him when he come home, and he always tell me where he goes, where, where he have been. And, uh, and, and and so, therefore, he was checking him out, asking him a question. Oh, we went here, we went there, whatever, whatever. And he wanted to know, was his son straight or was his son gay? Uh-huh. And so, therefore, praise God, Rollo came to the house. And amen. He said, well, we going out. I'm going out with my man. <laughs> with my man. I'm going out with my man, which he was referring to Lamont. And so Fred was looking at him like, what? Amen. And so, so many times you have guys today saying, that's my dude, or that's my man, but that doesn't mean that they are homosexuals. Can I get it? Or that's my boy. Hello, somebody. That, 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 that's my dog, huh? Come on, talk to me. That don't mean they are homosexuals. Hmm. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. People talk, that's my soulmate. The scripture doesn't say anything about that. Praise God. Amen. But they was friends. They had a friendship. Amen. To try to make this passage to teach a mystical binding of an actual soul is unwarranted. Hmm? 
is unwarranted. And so when I read that scripture, I think 2 uh, Samuel uh, 1 and 26, when I read that, I am distressed for thee, uh, my brother Jonathan, very uh, pleasant, very pleasant has, has thou been unto me. He looked out for, her, for him because once upon a time, Saul wanted to kill David. We got to read that, y'all. Uh, Saul wanted to kill David, amen, because David had gotten quite popular, amen, praise among the Israelites, amen, the nation of Israel, amen, because he killed so many, amen, and Saul killed so many, but we know David was known as a shepherd boy, but David was also known for killing the Goliath, the giant, mm -hmm. and he got a lot of praise behind that, and King Saul got jealous, and because of his jealousy, it drove him into rage that he wanted to take David out. And Jonathan knew this. Hmm? Jonathan knew this. So that's why he said, very pleasant had thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to know when we read this thing, y'all, passing the love of women. In other words, David was not, David was not implying that he had a sexual relationship with Jonathan. Hello, somebody. That's why I'm trying to get to this thing. He didn't have a sexual relationship with Jonathan. Homosexuality, homosexuality or homosexual acts were absolutely forbidden in Israel. Can I say that again? It was absolutely forbidden in Israel. Well, I'm going to take you to the word. If you got your Bible, it might be on your phone, might be on your app, but if you got your word of God, which I'm coming out of King James Virgin, look at Leviticus 18 and 22. What, what does Leviticus 18 and 22 say? Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. And we ain't talking about lying. You know, you speak, it's like, it's like laying down. You know, a man ain't supposed to lay down with another man like you would a woman. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. Thou shalt not lie down or lie, lie with mankind as with womankind. What it is it? It is an abomination. Some folks don't know what abomination is. It is detestable. It is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. It's disgusting. Amen. Praise God. It's, 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 it's hated in the eyesight of God. Huh? Amen. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. We go that in the scripture where God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah for their wickedness. Mm -hmm. Amen. The homosexuality. Amen. Praise God. That was going on in that city. In that city. God destroyed that city. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Leviticus 20 and 13 says that if a man also lie with, um, with mankind as he lie with a woman, both of them have committed abomination. They shall surely be put to death and their blood shall be upon them. Amen. They was put to death. We're talking about in the Old Testament, what was going on. They was put to death. That was a sinful act that they perform before God. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. So when we look at the scripture, when we look at the scripture, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible also warns. Amen. We talking about what does the Bible say about soul mates or, or soul ties. The Bible also warns mm -hmm, against entering ungodly relationships. Oh, y'all ain't saying that the Bible warns mm -hmm, not to enter into ungodly relationships. I'm going to talk to the women. I'm going to talk to the men, you know, because women, you ought to be more than just one of that, uh, you know, uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm his baby's mama. You better than that. I'm, I'm his baby's mama. You know, uh, uh, that's just my baby daddy. Hmm? Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I'm gonna get I got something for that too. Amen. Praise God. But it warns you. Amen. They told me and they taught in the word of God, amen, that you don't be unequally yoked with the unbeliever. Huh? 
Amen. If you're a person that believe in Christ Jesus and you believe in, in going to church and you love the Lord and you are born again Christian, you have no business hooking up or yoking up with somebody who is not saved who are not sanctified or filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. Praise God. You're looking for trouble already. So what you saying? Well, when you look in the book of uh, Proverbs, amen, Proverbs, uh, I think uh, 1 and 10 say, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. <laughs> amen. If sinners, amen, praise God, entice thee. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. The devil is busy. Mm -hmm. The devil ain't never stopped being busy. Hmm? Amen. The devil works in the mind of folks. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Don't be succumbed by the devil. Amen. And his foolishness. That's why I say when you got the spirit of the Lord, amen, on your side, God will give you a deserted little spirit and let you know. Amen. Pray God. If somebody for real, if they if they real, if they, if they, it's just phony. Huh? If they real, if they the real deal, or they just playing around, huh? Amen. And if they just playing around, why would you waste your time on somebody, amen, who just playing around and don't see nothing for their life or nothing like that? Praise God. Women, amen. I don't know why you yoke up with men, ain't working, don't have a job, ain't trying to hit a lick at a snake. Amen. It wasn't designed for you to be taking care of no man, no lazy man, if he able about it. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. You got two jobs that he don't have now. Maybe you have three jobs. He don't have now. Praise God. So it say you avoid people like that. Amen. Praise God. My son, if sinners entice you, do not give in to them. Do not give in to them. Do not go along with them. Do not set thy foot on. <laughs> Look at that. The Bible tells us, the Bible just fulfilling, tell us all these things, what we should not do. Amen. The 15th verse of the first chapter of Proverbs. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. <laughs> oh, y'all. Amen. Amen. They going to lead you into the path of destruction. It say, refrain thy foot from their path. Refrain thy foot from their path. This passage and others like it caution us against the wrong type of friends. Mm-hmm. You got to be careful who you choose to be your friend. Oh, y'all ain't saying that here. You got to be careful who you, you know, choose to be your friend. People say, I don't have friends. I have associates. And I guarantee you, those who are tuning in, pray God, you can count how many true friends you have probably on one hand. And you may have some fingers left over. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But David found a friend in Jonathan, and Jonathan found a friend in David. Hmm? Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Amen. If we could find a friend in Jesus, there's no friend like the lowly Jesus, huh? No, not one. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So the Bible tells us. Who, man, who, who we ought to yoke up with and who we shouldn't yoke up with, especially if you're a born-again Christian, pray God, you don't have no business running with unsaved folk. Hmm? Amen. Getting involved in their activity, covering, covering for them sometime. Hello, somebody. Amen. You know lying is wrong, bearing false witness is wrong. Why would you cover up for somebody? Hello, somebody. Amen. Pray to God. And whatever little testimony you had, you done lost your testimony because, amen, you lying. <laughs> amen. You lying for the liar. Oh, bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray to God. Stop short of describing any type of spiritual, uh, spiritual union of souls. Mm-hmm. Amen. So when I was looking at the scripture, because I was looking at the scripture and I, I read, amen, because I never found where it say a soulmate. Amen. I never read it. Amen. Maybe you have. Amen. You can hit me in my DM. Praise God. But amen. But I tell you what, I looked at Genesis. Genesis 2 and 24. Genesis 2 and 24. And I think the previous verse, either 22 or 23 of the second chapter, uh, Genesis 2. In 24, what I'm going to read, 
But I think it, I think 22 talks about how God took the rib out of Adam. Mm -hmm. Amen. And amen. How he took the rib out of Adam, Adam and he created Eve the woman. Come on, talk to me. Amen. He created Eve the woman. And I think the 23rd verse said, the, the Bible said, the, uh, I think it said, the scripture said, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. But I didn't see bone of my bone and, and flesh of my flesh and soul of my soul. I didn't see that. Huh? And so therefore, praise God, amen, when, when the Bible said Genesis 2 and 24, it said, therefore shall a man, mm -hmm. now I tell you, if you're going to take on a wife, yeah, therefore, if a man, uh, therefore, amen, a man leave, huh? amen, you leave his father and you leave his mother, come on, y'all ain't saying that, and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. That's what the scripture said. He ain't say no soul. It say one flesh. Hmm? Amen. Praise God. He teach these young men. Amen. You get pray, you get you get you 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 get married and you get a family. Don't mean you come hauling them back to your mama house. Don't mean you haul them back to your daddy house. Amen. To your parents' house. Amen. You amen. Before you make that move, huh? Amen. Amen. Sometimes young men ain't thinking with the head on their shoulders. They thinking with the head in their britches. Oh, I'm just, I, I call it like I see. Amen. They don't think things out. They get crazy. Amen. Crazy, but, but <laughs> amen. But behind, amen. Behind them skirts and things like that, them britches. Hello, somebody. And they don't think about, amen, praise God. If you take a young woman, if she's at home or, or whatever, praise God, she may have a father, whomever, amen. If you take her away from her, at least have somewhere to put her. Hmm? At least be able to provide for your family. But don't go make a family and you come back to the house with that family. Hello, somebody. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. We talking about soul ties. But it just said, I didn't see that right there. But it says right there, because I'm reading this verse before I can go to the New Testament. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. You leave your father and your mother and cleave unto his wife. It didn't say no girlfriend, his boo, his soulmate, my partner. It said wife. It didn't say my common law wife because we shacking up. We've been together for so many years. Amen. Praise God. I, if, 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 if he could sweat on you, he could sweat for you. Come on, talk to me. Amen. If he could sweat on you, you know what I'm talking about. He could sweat for you. Hello, somebody. You more than just a side piece or a side chick. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. It said you leave and you cleave. You leave and you cleave. You leave your parents and you leave your mother, your father, and you cleave to your wife and they shall be one flesh. Well, when you look at Matthew 19 chapter, Matthew 19 chapter, uh, if you look at the the fourth the fourth verse, <laughs> and Jesus, Jesus was talking. Have you not read that He which made them, hmm? who made it? God made them, which made them at the beginning made them male and female. It ain't no in between. It ain't no transgender, oh, no pansexual, bisexual, homosexual. Mm-hmm. Amen. Lesbian. Amen. Transvestite. Drag queen. It ain't all that. Either you male or you female. That's what the scripture said. This is what Jesus said. But also, he said in the scripture when I read uh, uh, Genesis 2 and 24, when you look at Matthew 19 and 5, and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Hmm? I didn't see what say soul. My soul would say flesh. Hmm? Amen. Because if that soulmate, like people say, those who are married, have a wife, have a husband, he said you become one flesh. You're no longer twain, but you one flesh. Flesh. It is say soul. Hmm? Amen. Now, what I'm saying is in the scripture, I think Ezekiel 18 and 4 says, 
Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, and the also of the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned, it, it shall die. Hmm? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. The soul that sinned, it, it shall die. So if we connect the soul, amen, in other words, uh, my wife, Sister Henderson, amen, if she died and go to heaven, amen, that means I'll go to heaven with her. Uh, if, if I die and go to heaven, that means she go. it don't work that way. Hmm? It doesn't work that way. We all going to give account for our own sins, our own transgressions. Huh? Amen. Praise God. So when we look in the scripture, we, we got to know what the word of God say. Because mm -hmm. a whole lot of people saying stuff is not scripture. It's not based upon what the Bible say. Yeah. It ain't based upon what the word of God say. And so therefore, when we get a little bit further down in the word, it say praise God also when we talk about, what does the Bible say about soul mates or soul ties? It said we also have a clear warning against fornication in the scripture. Mm -hmm. A clear thing. That's why, amen, I say it's the real time God because people dealing with real issues in society today. Some folks, oh, I've been hurt in marriage, whatever. I don't think I do the marriage thing again, but you still want to have some sex. You still want to have some sexual relations. And if you're not married because sex mm -hmm, was designed for the marriage. Oh, y'all ain't going to say that here. Sex was designed for the marriage. Amen. Amen. Some people say pre-create, pre-pre-creation. Amen. To pre-pre-create, uh, uh, create. Amen. To have children. Amen. But some that ain't trying to have children, they want to enjoy. It. But it's supposed to be for the husband and wife. So the Bible speaks clearly against, amen, uh, fornication in the word of God. Look what you're talking about. Well, when we look in the scripture. Amen. Do not, <laughs> you do not want, or you do not know uh, uh, that he who unite himself with a prostitute is one with her in body. Oh, bless the Lord. So what the scripture is telling us, I think it's 1 Corinthians uh, 6 and 16. He asked the question, what? Hmm? What? <laughs> if you look at 1 Corinthians 6 and 16, what? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body. Hmm? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Or y'all might say flush. <laughs> one flesh. So what you saying? When you lay down with other people, a whole lot of men probably got a whole lot of wives. Amen. Every time you perform a sexual act. And if that act was designed between a husband and wife, you doing an act <laughs> out of the confinement which God ordained. Oh, y'all ain't saying that here. Amen. We know what a harlot is. It's a prostitute. Amen. And we think of a prostitute, people always think about, amen, uh, women, but you got some male prostitutes. Hmm? Amen. Might call them a hoe. Amen. Now, instead of a gigolo, just a hoe. Mm-hmm. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Sleeping with that person, sleeping with that person, you become one with that person. That's the reason why people have to teach their sons and have to teach their daughters. I'm for real. I might lean up into this. You got to teach your son. Your daughter. It's more than just a physical act. Hello, somebody. You get emotions tied in. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Your emotions get tied in with that person. And, ooh, I just can't stand him. Ooh, I just can't stand her. Quit lying. Quit your lying. Yeah, you, you. Ooh, I just can't stand him. Did you get a baby? Ooh, I just can't stand him. I can't stand her. Then here come number two. Ooh, I just can't stand him. I just can't. And here come, you almost got a basketball team. <laughs> You become one. You become tied in with that sexual act. And that's not your husband. 
And so don't want to marry you. Some of y'all, amen, doing wifely duties on a girlfriend budget. <laughs> doing husband duty, amen, on a boyfriend budget. It wasn't designed that way. No, no, it wasn't designed that way, y'all. Amen. Praise God. We got God's word. Amen. Note that the body, the body is joined. The Bible said nothing of souls being joined. Huh? The Bible. <laughs> Amen. It don't say nothing about souls. Amen. Praise. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They had a word back in the day. Amen. Before I got so saved. Amen. Uh, I'm going to be jumping some bone. I ain't never heard somebody. I'm going to jump that soul. <laughs> a bunch of bone jumping. Mm-hmm. Amen. Didn't say nothing about no soul. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So what the scripture, what the Bible, the Bible presents, amen, evil as what? Amen. Addictive. Hmm? Some folks got a sex addiction. Some folks got a gambling addiction. Hmm? Some folks lost some money yesterday. Woo -hoo! They lost some money. Amen. Lost they honey. <laughs> and just miserable. Cause they vote. They 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 gamble. Amen. They bet it on their favorite team. And they lost. Amen. Some folks have lost cars, done lost homes, done lost families. Amen. Praise God. Because amen. They bet it because they have a gambling addiction. Amen. Praise God. Some people, amen, are addicted to alcohol. Some folks are addicted to drugs. Hmm? Amen. Amen. Some people have, amen, praise God, amen, addicted to food. Amen. Praise God. Addicted to many things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's an addiction. Amen. And put it, especially, praise God, it's something. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Some things we talk about idol God. Amen. Some things have become idolatry with some people. They worship that more than they worship God. Hmm? Oh, yes. 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 Amen. However, nowhere does the Bible, does the Bible speak of fragment. Souls are dividing one's soul. In short, the Bible gives us clear direction for our lives. And we know the remedy for sin is to confess it and forsake it. Hmm? Ain't that what the scripture says? I believe you look at 1 John, 1 John 1 and 9. Amen. If we confess our sins. He is faithful. Who is God is faithful. And just to forgive us our sins. Hmm? To forgive us of our sins and to do what? And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That, that, that covers everything. All unrighteousness. Hmm? I believe in James. Uh, 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 therefore, him that knoweth to do good. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him is sin. Some folks know what they're doing. they not, amen, they very much aware they are doing it deliberately. It's not through ignorance, amen, praise God, but they're doing it deliberately. But God is telling us if we confess, hmm, if we own whatever we're doing, God, amen, is a faithful God. God is a just God to forgive us our sins, mm -hmm. to forgive us of our wrongdoings, amen, praise God, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Praise God. I believe. If you look in the book of John, amen, John, I believe, uh, the eighth chapter of John, amen, I'm about to come to a close, amen, because, amen, uh, we're talking about what does the Bible say about soul mates or soul ties, mm-hmm, amen, so when I look at John, the 18th 
the eighth chapter, excuse me, the eighth chapter, we know, amen, when you read up the upper part of the, I'm going to get eight and 11, but a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. She was caught in the very act of adultery, amen, and the scribes and the Pharisees brought this woman to Jesus to see what Jesus had to say about it. Amen. They begin to say what Moses' law said to stone her to death because she have committed adultery. Amen. And so many times, amen, women be left holding the bag because, amen, I wonder, amen, I can't, I don't never try to rewrite the word of God, but if you look in John, the eighth chapter, beginning from the first verse down to the 11th verse, it talks about the woman caught in the very act of adultery. And so I'm just saying, they brought that woman and they set her in the midst of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And oftentimes women get stuck with the bag, holding the bag. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, praise God, they brought her before Jesus to see what Jesus was going to say. And they say, well, according to the law, she supposed to be stoned to death because of the act that she performed. But it lets me know, amen, if she was caught in the very act of adultery, I want y'all to think about something. Where was the man? <laughs> she couldn't commit the act by herself. Huh? She couldn't commit the act by herself, but they brought the woman before Jesus. Huh? Yes, they did. Yeah, they did. They brought the woman before Jesus. And oftentimes, amen, praise God, a man, hello, <laughs> amen, they'll lie, cheat, tell you what you want to hear. And when they get you pregnant, get you locked up, amen, amen. They used to say back in the day, she in family way, amen. And when you get caught in family way, you stuck holding the bag, <laughs> amen, praise God. They, 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 they want to play, but they don't want to pay. Come on, tell me, so talk to me, somebody. Amen. Pray God. So I never, I never try to uh, uh, add because the Bible tells us don't add nor take away. Pray God. But they just set that woman in the midst. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. They will stone her to death. But Jesus, amen. Jesus stooped down and he wrote with his finger, he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Mm hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. And he said also, he that without sin, let him cast the first stone. Huh? That stopped them dead in their tracks because they were convicted. Mm -hmm. Amen. In their own conscience. Amen. And they left from the elders to the last. What the scripture said. You read that. Huh? Praise the name of the Lord. So God is a forgiving God. But the scripture tell us, amen, praise God. Jesus had a conversation with her. Jesus continued to have a conversation with her. And when he lifted himself up, the Bible said, pray God, as he began to look around, he asked the woman, Woman, where are thou accusers? Mm -hmm. Amen. Had no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. That's what she said. She was talking to the right person. No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Huh? Pray God, go and sin. No more. Well, we know I like the scripture. I think John 3, 16 and 17, but they say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But I like the scripture will say, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. See, sometimes, praise God, amen, are we trying to play Jesus? <laughs> are, are we trying to play Jesus for crazy? So what I'm saying is, praise God, he didn't come to condemn the world. In other words, when I just got through reading about the woman that was caught in the very act of, he said, neither did, neither did I come to condemn you. You was already condemned. Hmm? Amen. Jesus got a lot of sense, you all. <laughs> Amen. Jesus got a lot of sin. And so it said he didn't, uh, the father didn't send him into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. You could be forgiven of your sins. Yes, you can. You could be forgiven of your sins. The scripture says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Hmm? But he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. If you don't believe, if you're not a believer in Christ Jesus, you're condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's what the scripture said. That's what the scripture said. Just tell you what the words say. Hmm? Amen. Praise God. 
That's what we have is the word of God. We have to study the word of God for ourselves. I tell folks, quit being lazy. Quit being lazy. Study the word of God for yourself. You know, it, 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 it would really, uh, I know we living in the COVID area. I know we we living in a time that some folks don't come together, but boy, I tell you, when I uh, flipped the TV yesterday, boy, some of them stadiums were full of folks. Mm-hmm. Watching their favorite team, some, they ain't studying about no COVID. Some of them had a party at their house, come over and watch the game. I got this 65-inch TV, flat screen, uh, round sound. <laughs> High def, <laughs> make it seem like you on the field or either you at the stadium. Y'all come on and we gonna eat some pizza. Or, uh, we we gonna we gonna we gonna have some 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 finger foods and, and stuff like that. Would it be something if people could come together like that for a Bible study to study God's word? I said that because many people have lots of time. They, 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 they find time to do the things they like to do. Huh? Yeah. I remember, oh, that been some years ago when I worked overnights. Amen. When I worked overnight, I, I ain't too much, never liked working overnight, especially retail. But yeah, I did it for a long time, work overnight. But I like to fish. I don't care how tired I was. When I would get off of work in the morning, because I worked at Sporting Goods, I gets me some worms. Give me some water. Here I'm going to the lake or wherever I want to go. When I should have been going home to get my rest, to be prepared to go to work later on that night. But I found strength. This is why I'm trying to go with this thing. I found strength to do what I enjoyed doing. And that was fishing. And sometimes sitting up there, when I would go to uh, Sam Raven, I believe it is, uh, 103, on the bridge sitting on them rocks. Sometimes I will go to sleep sitting on them rocks. When I should have went home, it got my rest. Worked all night. So what I'm saying is people find they can squeeze in some time, sacrifice some sleep, sacrifice many things to do what they enjoy doing. So what I'm saying is, Instead of people being lazy and not reading the word of God, amen, yoke up with somebody that you trust and know they know the word of God and going to shoot it to you straight. huh? See, sometimes people want to get with somebody, amen, going to tell them what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear. Amen. When you're concerned about somebody's soul, oh, y'all ain't talking to me. When you're concerned about somebody's soul, you're going to stare them in the right way. Wouldn't that be something, amen? Oh, if you could bring some finger food or stop, amen, stop it and, and get some, some, some donuts and, and some, and we're going to have a Bible study. Hmm? See, that's not too appealing. <laughs> that's not too appealing. Like when you're going to have popcorn and nachos and, and some hot wings. I believe, I, I don't think nobody would refuse you if you went to Buffalo Wild Wings and say, I'm going to get some hot wings and I'm going to bring them to Bible study. <laughs> I don't think nobody refuse you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because Jesus, amen, after he, after he taught the multitude, he didn't send them away. Amen. But he set them down in, in groups, huh? Had them set them down in groups, praise the name of the Lord. And he took two fish, y'all, two fish and five loaves of bread and fed over 5,000. Hmm? Yes, he did. Hmm? After he <laughs> got through teaching them. And I believe that's the concept that some churches have adopted down through the years because most of the time when you have a three o'clock service, I don't know if folks still have it or whatever, you know, been a while, amen. You have a service, most times you give people food. So after they done heard a good word, then sometimes people are looking for some, some good food. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus, I said Jesus started that thing. Jesus started that thing. Now we ain't going to send y'all away hungry. Amen. We done gave you the word. Now we're going we gonna to break bread. We're going to sit down and we're going to eat. 
Hmm? So once again, that's not appealing to somebody. That's not appealing to somebody. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Don't, don't you call folks. Amen. You, you better not call nobody yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> talking about having no Bible study. <laughs> oh, you better not. <laughs> Amen. Now, I'm talking about people in the church. You probably got cussed out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And if they team lost, they sure probably didn't want to respond to you. <laughs> but they got Jesus. <laughs> Might have to put some preachers on the pulpit. <laughs> I mean, on, on, on the altar. Excuse me. Might have to put some preachers on the, on the altar. <laughs> <laughs> they might have to put the whole church on the altar. Amen. Amen. Because some people might have a jacked up attitude after yesterday. Mm -hmm. But I'll get back to my point. People can find stuff to do with their time. Amen. Pretty good. They can spend up there all day long complaining about this place. But what about coming together? Amen. And studying the word of God. Because it's the word of God going to keep us. And I'm telling you, I'm serving notice on you right now. This virus ain't over. Amen. The wrath of God is upon the children of disobedience because of the sinful nature of man and the arrogance of man. Folks don't want to repent. Folks want to go about their business doing what they want to do. Huh? And God have a way of driving us to our knees. Things are happening in different states that have never happened before. Things are happening, y'all. God is trying to get our attention. Hmm? God is trying to get our attention. Are you listening? Are you listening? Amen. We see some things. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Praise God. He's going to get our attention one way or the other. And one thing about God, he ain't going to force you to receive him or to accept him. Hmm? Oh, bless the Lord. Amen. He gave man free will. Either you're going to serve him or you're not going to serve him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That's a blessing in being obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. He looking for people who are willing and obedient, not unwilling and disobedient, but he looking for somebody who's willing and obedient. And if you're willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. That's what the scripture said. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword because the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Hmm? God lets us know straight. He shoots straight with us. If you obey me, if you stay true to me, if you, if you, if you stay faithful to me, loyal to me, committed to me, this is what I do. But if you're unfaithful, unloyal, hmm? uh, <laughs> uncommitted, this is what's going to happen. The wrath of God is upon the children of disobedience. So we pray to God that it was something said to encourage someone. Amen. Like I said, I find encouragement. Amen. When I go out and I see people and they tell me they tune in, I thank God. It's encouraging to me. Amen. And, and every day. Amen. Every day. Amen. I had an appointment to the doctor last week. Amen. Getting stronger and stronger. Amen. God is touching my lungs and they're getting stronger and stronger. And I give God the glory and I give God the praise. Amen. As long as God continue to bless me and I stay in the will. That's the problem. That's the key. To stay in God's will. God will continue to bless you and I. Stay in his will. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. You're living beneath your privilege if you're not in the will of God. Get in the will of God. Amen. Praise God. He is our refuge. He is a, a present help. Amen. In a time of trouble. Mm -hmm. He is. Amen. We have to trust God. Talk to God. Amen. Talk to the Lord, y'all. Amen. We have to. Amen. That's a scripture I read every morning. I always, every uh, uh, the, every time the Lord allow us to have a new year, I always uh, pray to God, give me a scripture that I can read in the morning to, to be an encouragement. And I think Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Amen. I find encouragement through the word, y'all. Amen. Because one thing about God responds to his word. But Deuteronomy 31 and 6 said, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, 
nor be afraid of them. Whatever that them may be, don't be afraid of them. <laughs> huh? For the Lord thy God, for the Lord letting us know, don't fear them because the Lord thy God, amen, it is he that doeth go with thee. He is with you. He also said, I will not fail you. I will not fail thee nor forsake you. The Lord is with you. Now, I guarantee you, if you read that, se that, that seventh, I believe the seventh verse, Moses was encouraging Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Said the same thing, be strong, amen, be strong. Amen. Praise God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's what we have to. We have to lean and depend on Jesus. When you can't lean and depend on no one else, you always can lean and depend on Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Lifting your eyes into the hills from which cometh your help. I really, We realize that all our help comes from the Lord, which made the heavens and earth. Amen. I just thank God once again for the opportunity for those that tune in. in. Amen. By way of social media, have a YouTube uh, platform, YouTube uh, 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 channel. Amen. Subscribe to that. Praise God. I stay in the word of God. That's all I have is the word of God, the Bible. Amen. The Bible is right. Somebody wrong. But we have to stay in the word of God. Continue to pray for those who have been affected by the, the virus and, and other sickness. Amen. Amen. Other things that are going on in people's bodies and lives. We praying for those that are sick and the, the shut-in and uh, those behind prayers and walls. Amen. Those that are going through things. Amen. So many things have been exposed because of this virus. Amen. Many people are suffering, amen, with mental health issues. Amen. We see in our community, people pray, no, they just suffering with mental health issues. Amen. Praise God. And we have to pray. And I, I say it in our community, the black community, there's nothing wrong with seeking professional help. Amen. If you need help, we know the Lord will help us. That's good. We're going to go to God first. But it's good to seek out professional help to help you navigate through some things that you may be going through. Amen. But amen. We could talk to the Lord, though. We always go to him first. Amen. Go, go to him first. Amen. Pray for those who are suffering. Amen. Behind depression and other things, amen, that's going on within your life. We pray, amen, that God will give you peace, that God will give you a peace of mind. Amen. Praise God. It's something when your peace is disturbed, when you can't rest at night. Amen. Praise God. But he said he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. Amen. Get your mind on Jesus. Amen. And he can bring comfort and consolation. Amen. He can comfort you. Hello, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So once again, I thank God for you all tuning in. Amen. If it's the Lord's will, amen. See you on uh, Thursday night. Amen. Praise God for the real time gospel hour. You continue to pray for me. Amen. Continue to pray for us. Amen. And we'll definitely continue to pray for you. Amen. Praise God. Pray that you will have a blessed remaining week. Amen. Praise God. And if it's the Lord's will, we'll see you again on Thursday night. God bless you. Amen. And God keep you.